I'm putting on new strings on an upright bass for one of my students, Brett. And so far I have the G string on right now. And I wanted to show you guys how to restring a bass. Um, because there are a lot of different ways to do it, but I like what I've kind of figured out. So right now I'm doing the D string. The D string is kind of a pain. So you can see down in there, the peg box is pretty you know, tight. Um, but here's what I do. So I take the string and um, I, I keep it full length um, and I put it in the top side of the peg. Then I turn the string, I mean wind the peg, and I grab with needle nose. And what I'm gonna do is pull it through uh, a considerable amount, okay? And then I'm gonna turn the, the peg back around, backwards, to expose the same hole that I just went through. And I'm gonna put it through one more time. And I do this with every string. Doing this um, kinda makes the string tie itself in a knot. So now that I have that in there, I'm just going to keep it in there. I'm going to turn it back and grab it again with the, with the pliers and just kind of pull, pull enough length in and pull it some more. Pull it, pull it. Okay, so now I've got a pretty good amount of string in there. Okay, and then I can grab the string itself and and pull it back through. So now I've got this little kind of knot going on. Um, and now I can tighten the string. So I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it. Uh, some people have like string winders and stuff that they use, but I find that doing it um, with your hand it's a good exercise also so uh, notice I'm keeping the string tight to keep it in the bridge and uh, I'm doing that just so everything lines up before um, before I let it go now I try to I've got the old a string here I'm, I'm gonna try to when I wrap the a string do it so the winding doesn't really touch the D string so much um, the G string is going to be kind of on there at this point, but that's okay. If I can keep the winding from touching other windings, uh, tuning is a little more stable overall. Okay, so now I'm going to check the ball, make sure that the ball is up in the in the channel here in the tailpiece. If it's not, and you tighten it, it'll slip through the hole and whack you in the head. I've had that happen before, so. And that's going to separate and make a little space. Okay, so now I have all this excess string back here. And what I can do now is grab the excess, bring it back around, and um, clip it. And I'm going to clip it just, just inside the peg box here. And before I clip it, I fold it in to itself. There we go. So there's the D. Okay. Now I can do the A. Uh, I always go G to E, um, just because how the the strings kind of layer on top of each other. Um, but it doesn't really matter. Some people go D first. That's fine. Okay. Um, if you're saving your strings, you wanna 
wind, unwind them all the way. If you're not saving your strings, you can just cut them at the, at the nut and throw it in the garbage. Some people have reused the, um, the little felt things that come with strings. Um, I'm actually not putting these on this, this new string setup. Um, just to get more of a solid contact. Um, it just depends on the bass and how it sounds. If it rattles, if it rattles, you can put put one on. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm getting this thicker string up into the channel here, making sure that it's all the way up, and then as I tighten it, it'll compress and, and squish into place. There'll be enough tension to move it. Okay, so with the A string, because it's a little closer toward the nut, I'm actually going to cut the string first. So what I'm going to do is measure about four inches away from the peg, so I'm about that far away, and I'm going to cut the string. Uh, again, I'm going to fold it first, and then snip it. And I'm going to do the exact same uh, procedure that I did before. Now notice the D string is over the peg, the hole of the A string. So I need to be mindful of what side I put the string on and how the string winds as I go. I want it to be winding from the hole towards the side of the peg box. So I'm just going to do the same little thing again. Put the string in, reach in and snag it. Through. Now notice I'm on, I'm on the outside of the string. Okay, I'm gonna twist this back and uh, put it through again. With the bigger strings, it's a little harder to do, but it's not impossible. Especially if you have pliers. I've done it without pliers and it's a real pain to try to reach in there. Okay. Okay, so now what I do is pull that string uh, tight and it creates a little knot there. And as the string gets tight, um, the knot will compress upon itself. And doing this, um, I've never had a string break since I started doing it this way, um, which is really cool. Because having an upright bass string break, especially on a gig, is kind of a frightening experience. It freaks you out. So, okay, so now I'm gonna just kind of push it down into place and start tightening it. And as I tighten it, it'll it'll you'll 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 see the knot kind of tighten on itself. Okay, and I'm holding the string tight again. Okay, so see how it t hit the D string and kind of pushed it? There's a little angle there. This is kind of common um, in string instruments. That is actually going to make the D string sharp. So as you tune the A string, um, the D string will change pitch. So you have to be careful how you set this up. So what will happen is over time, this string will stretch, and I can start moving these this knot around. Same with the D string, it'll move and stretch. Um, yeah, that's bugging me enough that I'm gonna fix it. So if I have that problem, then what I'm gonna do, so I'm loosening the D string now, and I'm actually gonna switch the side that the string sits on. Channel there, channel there. And now the A string I can tighten, and I'm, and even though it looks like it's touching, I'm actually 
missing it. You know, you can even kind of see. Scoot that over a little bit. So I'm missing the G, I'm missing the A. There you go, it's another knot touching. So when I tune, it'll be a lot more stable. Okay, so now I can do the E. With the E, because it's so thick, it's hard to get it in there twice. Depending on the brand of the string and how tapered the coil is at the end, I might be able to get it in there twice. If not, I'll do it once with enough length to wrap. And it's, uh, the A string is high enough away from the peg that I won't actually touch. So I wrap the E a little more traditionally without tying the little knot. And it seems to hold, you know, of course, it's been done that way for hundreds of years. Um, but I like these little knot things that I've done. Um, because they're neat. There's not a lot of string flying out and everything's really condensed in there. So, and uh, you can stretch the strings a little quicker and they settle into place nicely that way, which I really like. Okay. Got its own good thing. Okay, the hard part with the E string is in the tailpiece because of the thickness of the string. I have had to um, I've had to file out this part. I've had to like widen this on some of my students' bases because um, it's not wide enough for the E string wrap. So let's see how this looks. Um, notice how the wrap of the string is kind of like thinner one way than it is the other. Like that way. So I want to line that up with the channel. I'll, I'll do it this way so you can see it. Um, if I put the string in backwards on purpose here. So Here's the here's the string. Now if I go this way, and it, this is pretty wide, but this way it won't fit as well as it will this way. Right, you see that? So now I can put it in the right direction. And this one fits pretty well. Okay, so with the E string what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put it in the channel all the way up, and I'm going to push down with my thumb. See how I'm kind of bending that string into place? So I'm going to push down right there, and then um, with all the strings I push just a little bit on the bridge, but with the E string I push from both sides. See that? See what I just did? Bam. Okay. Do it with both strings. Okay. Then I come up, and I'm going to measure off maybe six or so inches, six or seven inches away from the peg, because so I don't need all of this for the E string. Okay, I'm going to bend it, clip it, okay, and now I can proceed in the same way. What I have to do though is I have to wind underneath because I don't want to hit the other strings. So I have to feed it this way. Same kind of idea, turn it back. This string is thin enough that I think I can get it in twice. Pull it up through. And notice I'm kind of working around the A string. That's, and that's okay. You can loosen the A string and scoot it off to the side if it's too difficult to do. I bring that around so I can see it pretty good. Yeah, that'll go in. Okay. I 
back around. Okay, and I'm gonna kind of push it through so that I can get to it with the pliers. Here we go. Bam! Oops, sorry. <laughs> okay. So there's really not that much wrap um, on the E, but because of that little knot, it'll be pretty solid. Then I just tighten the string and, you know, just let this do its thing. It's not that big a deal. I can, I can stuff it down in there, or I can cut it off more if I want. And the E-string e -string will stretch the most, or rather, the most often. Um, I want to double check this here, so I push up so that it's all the way up. And I can tighten it while I do that. You can see it getting taut. Right. So I just get it perfect in perfect fourths, you know, close to the pitch, and now I can stand it up and fine tune it. So there you go. That's how I string a bass.